Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh video of our front end interview series. In this video, we are going to look at call, apply, and bind in detail. And these three methods are actually used to play with the this keyword. So in case you have skipped the previous video on this keyword, so go ahead and watch that before you can start with this particular video. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically create a function and let's say display name. And all this function does is simply console logs the name. And right now I'm going to go ahead and invoke this function. Now what will be the output? We all know that the output is basically going to log Simran, right? So I'm going to go ahead and run this and it's logging Simran. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say display name dot and then call, okay? So I'm going to use the call method. So call method can also be used to invoke the function. So I'm going to say display name dot call, okay? Let's see what will be the output. I'm going to run this. And as you can see, again, it's printing Simran. So what's really happening behind the scene is when you're calling a function like this. So when I say display name, with these brackets, right? When I invoke the function, behind the scenes, always your function is actually getting called by using this call method. So when you're saying display name with this parentheses, behind the scenes, it gets converted to display name dot call, okay? So every function has access to a property called call, which can be used to invoke that particular function, right? And behind the scenes, this is actually what happens when you invoke your function like this. And the same thing also goes for apply, okay? So instead of call, if I do apply and then go ahead and run this, you can see that again, it's going to print Simran, right? I have called it twice. So this is what we can conclude. We can also call a function by simply doing dot call or dot apply. And when we don't use anything behind the scene, it is actually doing display name dot call, okay? So why do we actually need this call and apply, right? Now, in order to understand the use case, we are going to take this particular example. Let's say you're playing a game and in the game, there are two participants, okay? So the first participant's name is Lily, right? This is an object. So name is Lily, battery is 70. She also has a charge battery method that will basically take her battery to 100. So this dot battery is equal to 100. Now, how do we invoke this function? We just need to do participant one dot charge battery, right? So this is how we can take the battery life to 100. And because we are doing participant one dot charge battery, the value of this keyword is going to be participant one, right? Inside of our charge battery function. And therefore, this dot battery is like saying participant one dot battery. And inside of participant one, battery is nothing but 70. So this dot battery will be changed to 100. And let's actually go ahead and console this, right? So we can see if the battery is charged. So I'm going to go ahead and console log our participant. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. As you can see, the battery life changed to 100. It was actually 70, but after we called charge battery function, we could change it to 100. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second participant for this particular game. So I'm going to say participant 2, right, equal to, and this time the name is, let's say, John, and the battery life of John is just 30 right so right now your participant 2 does not have a charge battery method and if we want to charge the battery of participant 2 what do we do should we go ahead and copy this function to participant 2 like charge battery same here we shouldn't be doing that right there should be a way for us to take the charge battery method from participant 1 and use it for participant 2 well this is where your call method comes into picture and that would be the use case of your call method so here what i'm going to do is i want to use charge battery from participant 1 in participant 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say participant 1, right? Participant 1 has the method charge battery. So I'm going to say participant 1 dot charge battery and then dot call. So this will basically invoke the function. We already discussed this, right? But this time I'm going to pass an argument to this call method. And what is that argument? It is going to be participant 2, okay? Now what this basically means is this. I want to take the charge battery method of participant 1, but I want to use the data from participant 2, okay? That means you want to call charge battery function from participant 1 on the object participant 2, okay? This is what the call function does. And what does it actually mean? When we invoke this function charge battery, we are doing this dot battery, but this time the battery should not be taken from participant one. Instead, it should be taken from participant two. So whatever argument you pass to your call method, the first argument on that, we should be applying this charge battery function. So this dot battery equal to 100 will charge the battery of participant 2 to 100. So let's go ahead and log this and see what happens. So as you can see, I'm going to log both the participants and let me go and run this. As you will see, this is a first particular object, right? Name is Lily. Her battery life is still 70, right? It did not get charged because I called the method for participant 2. And if I go ahead and check participant 2, the battery life is actually 100. So this is how you can reuse methods of other objects for a different particular object. So here we are reusing the function charge battery of participant 1 in participant 2. 
So this call method is quite useful that way, right? But what if you don't want to charge the battery to 100 and it should be taken as an input of how much we want to charge our battery or how much additional battery do we want to add? So for that particular use case, you can pass other parameters or arguments to your call methods. I can say 20, 30 and so on. So I can pass any number of arguments after passing the object, right? And this will be received over here. So I'm passing two arguments. So let me go ahead and receive this and say A, B. These are the two arguments that I'm receiving. So here I can use this arguments any way I want and what I'm going to do is this dot battery right plus A plus B right. So here I'm just simply adding whatever arguments I received to the battery life. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and as you can see the battery life changed to 80 why because it became 30 plus 30 plus 20 which is basically 80 right. So you can also pass arguments to your call method. So after passing the first object you can pass additional arguments which are comma separated okay and you can also receive it in your method now let's talk about the apply method the apply method is very similar to call so if you have understood call it's very easy to understand apply all you have to do is change your call to apply and instead of taking comma separated arguments it actually takes an array of arguments so i can just change this to 20 comma 30 okay so instead of passing directly comma separated it takes two arguments the first one is the object and the second one is an array of arguments okay so now let me go ahead and run this and see what happens as you can see again the battery life changed to 80 so you need to pass your arguments as an array and how you receive it will be very same you don't receive it as an array but you will be again receiving it as a comma separated arguments okay in case of call you pass comma separated arguments and in case of apply you pass an array of arguments so this is the only difference between call and apply now let's move on to the bind so the way we use bind is actually very similar to call method okay so instead of call let me go ahead and change this to bind okay again it is going to take first argument as an object and the next few arguments will be comma separated arguments so very similar to call the syntax is very similar to call now what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and run this as you can see the battery life is 30 it did not actually change right so that means our charge battery function did not get invoked so what is happening right here so guys here is the thing with bind in case of call and apply when you're using call and apply your function is immediately called right but in case of bind it does not get called in fact it just returns another function which you can call later what do we mean by that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and store this in a variable charge battery of participant 2 i know that's a big name i couldn't think of something else but basically your bind method returns a function it does not immediately invoke it but it returns a function that you can call at any later point okay that means your charge battery of participant 2 should basically contain a function that you can invoke and how do you invoke a function i should say charge battery of participant 2 and then add this parenthesis right because it's a function now let me go ahead and run this and see what happens you can see right the battery of participant 2 has now changed to 80 that means your bind method returns a function and it is not immediately invoked and whatever it returns you can invoke it at any later point so as summary we can say that call apply and bind are used to pass a different value of this to a function right so by using dot call dot apply and dot bind whatever argument the first argument that you pass will be the value of this keyword inside of any function that you want right and the second point is this these three methods let you reuse methods of another objects for a different object right so here we are reusing the method of participant one inside of participant two so it's a very useful use case right and the third thing is this when you use call and apply your function is immediately invoked but in case of bind it actually returns a function that you can invoke at a later stage in your code so that's it in this video guys you can go ahead and subscribe for the upcoming front end interview series videos and you can also smash the like button in case you found this video helpful see you in the next video